Hey, th thank you, everybody, so much for coming. Because you, thank you so much. You make this concert as much as we do. Thank you. So I'm going to share one of my great passions and love in life, which is diving under Antarctic ice. I'm a diver in the U.S. Antarctic program. And I've got my home movies from last October to do that with. So let's, let's roll the movie. It's the Ross Sea, frozen ice. Ice is 20 feet thick. The ocean's underneath. When we're there in the springtime, the sun doesn't set. It just goes around the horizon about that height. There's an emperor penguin. And to go get through this 20 foot thick ice, we use dynamite, but we don't harm any penguins. And that gets us down to the world I love beneath the ice. Rob Robbins, the diving supervisor at McMurdo Station. And we're having some fun on a dive at the end of the season, just before Halloween, um, taking a graphite guitar down underwater to play. That, that ceiling of ice overhead looking like a gas giant planet from space or something is one of the most beautiful sights in the world. So we wear these three-fingered gloves to keep our hands warm. The water is minus two Celsius, 28 degrees Fahrenheit. It's about between a tenth and two hundredths of a degree away from freezing solid. That's called anchor ice there. To, up to a certain depth, ice forms these great crystals on the bottom that are fun to kick up in front of the camera. Starfish capo, very popular. You know, whenever we use the capo, it attracts a big audience, usually. Um, I don't know, they, they really like that. The, um, the Waddell seal, he's a big fan of that. Animal perfectly adapted to living on the ice and under the ice. that has no natural predators, so um, has no fear of humans. He's tagged. You see the little yellow tag on his uh, left rear flipper. They're almost all tagged by researchers. They know the weight and date of birth of almost every seal there. Harbor Ice Wall, which features prominently in the Werner Herzog film Encounters at the End of the World that I was the producer of and uh, cameraman of. I shot all the underwater stuff and about 20% of the surface material. Lots of scallops there. Filter feeding and swimming around. effects of climate change in McMurdo Sound is the sea ice has not gone out so many years, so there's not a lot of light in, except places that are um, close to shore, like here at Turtle Rock, where the, the ice pushing against the shore has broken it up and given us some light coming through the ceiling. Here's Rob taking a look at a jellyfish. These blow in from the open water that's about uh, 40 miles away from here. Jellyfish, you'll see in a moment, he's got a little hitchhiker on board. Um, 
He's got a type of amphipod there on the front. You see it's swimming, trying to swim. Uh, that's parasitic on jellyfish. And uh, the, the jellyfish is uh, his lunchbox. And he just very slowly eats away at the jellyfish. I've been down to the ice seven times now since 19, uh, since 2001. Here's a, um, a tinafore, a jellyfish-like animal that moves by those cilia. Been down there seven times, first time on an artist and writer's grant, the other six times as a working research diver. Some beautiful soft corals down at 100 feet at Cape Evans. You, this is the kind of thing that you divers in the audience would think of seeing in the tropics. Wouldn't expect to see under light, under ice, but there's a terrific amount of ice, of life, excuse me, under the ice, as we'll see. Towards the end of the springtime, algae starts to bloom under the ice, and uh, these little fish, uh, borks, juveniles here, two, three inches, four inches long, will grow up to 12 inches in size, and they're having a big feast up here on the the algae that's growing. Usually I've gone on life sciences research projects, but this last year I went on an engineering project and the year before that on a geology project. Here's a burnack, a little scared away. The engineering project that I was on was with Stacy Kim, who you see here from Moss Landing Marine Lab, just on the other side of Monterey Bay. And this is her robot there, uh, Skinny. Called Skinny, it's an acronym for something, but it can fit through a very small jiffy drill, gasoline power drill hole that a diver couldn't fit through. So it allows us to check out dive sites ahead of time. There it is looking at an old scientific experiment that's been on the bottom for about 25 years looking at a volcano sponge that's about four feet tall, that sponge. These things are big. Giganticism is common in the Antarctic organisms. Skinny can go much deeper than a diver can go. Skinny can go down to a thousand meters on a very long tether. Seal's not quite sure what to think of that. We'll look at a different sponge community here on the bottom that's a little deeper than divers usually go. The diving supervisor and I went down to check it out, the kind of place where Skinny can go look at things. Very dense community of life. It's just. Uh, packed about a foot deep on the bottom of, of sponges and all sorts of inver invertebrates. Anemones, soft corals, bryozoans. Starfish. Here's something kind of mysterious. This is down at 180 feet deeper than divers are allowed to go. Now it was a full-sized mannequin left there 25 years ago by Paul Dayton, who's the father of benthic ecology. Her name's Marta. Um, that jellyfish we saw a while ago, you know it's the same one because it has the same hitchhiker up there. I think this is the first video or even photographs anyone shown of these uh, carnivorous, well, all, most anemones are carnivorous, carnivorous uh, anemones that eat jellyfish. So it, uh, jellyfish gets too low, 
it just reels it in. In about 45 minutes, it reeled the jellyfish all the way in. tried to do this season that I became kind of obsessed with was doing a very long take, a 15 minute take underwater. And uh, I'll show you a little portion of it here, about eight minutes. I think it gives you an idea what it's really like to go diving there. So I just take the camera and I swim. And I gradually get shallower. These are big volcano sponges that are five or six feet tall. at a historical Ross Sea um, land site called Arrival Heights. At McMurdo Station is just a shore up there. play guitar for a little while and just enjoy the, the trip here. Visibility is um, about 3,000 feet at the beginning of the season in uh, September. It's probably dropped to about 12 or 1,500 feet now.
I did this shot about five times and I, I emailed the first one to uh, my friend Werner Herzog and Werner was, you've got to get closer to the bottom, closer to the bottom. So my, my belt buckle, my weight belt is practically dragging on the bottom here trying to stay close and keep my buoyancy just right. So it gets a little jerky there. Now we enter the anchor ice region up here where there's a beautiful anchor ice, ice platelet crystals uh, growing on the bottom. different world up here. Quite a few juvenile fish hiding in the ice and floating just above the ice here. Funny thing is, um, so there's only one place we can get out in and out of the water, the dive hole, right? And that, that's it, you have to find your way back to it. And you've got your buddy next to you in case there's an emergency. So the first time I did this swim with uh, about a 15 minute swim total away from the dive hole, because I go a lot farther. Um, I had Rob, Rob, the diving supervisor with me, I said, okay, just follow behind. And then I went way, way beyond here, and I stopped and turned around, and he wasn't there, and um, went swimming back. And he was like, I can't swim that fast, Henry. Um, but a little disconcerting to be that far away from the hole. down there in the distance. And here's Rob at the end of the dive. Notice his bubbles going up. the hole and I spent an extra five minutes just being there in this, this gorgeous environment. It's my favorite place to work. Thank you so much. <laughs> 